Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. In this video, I'm going to be talking in a little bit of detail about two knives that I designed actually a couple of years ago. And I really haven't done any videos on them because there were some uh, things that I, nuances and things that I was working on with them to try to get them a little bit better. Uh, these were two projects that um, were near and dear to my heart that I really wanted to be um, to get down perfect and they're almost there. Uh, two of which are currently on the website still available uh, to be purchased and uh, we'll be talking about some of the uh, new aspects of, of these two knives that we're going to be trying to upgrade on so that uh, we'll even have a newer and better version but the ones that are on the website, I'm quite happy with, and I'm really pleased that I'll be able to present them to you. The two knives that I'm talking about is the Spitfire, which is uh, actually, it's called the Tactical Spitfire. And the other one is the Blue Dragonfly Camp Knife. Now, uh, let me show you these. I'm gonna first talk about the, uh, the Camp Knife. The first Camp Knife, which is this one that I'm holding up right now, was the first uh, one that we were offering on our website. I have since then uh, taken it off the website because we have a, a newer and better version of it. And also the blacksmith that I am uh, that helped me build these uh, is no longer with the Dragonfly Cookery and Knives uh, group. So. Um, the new ones has, is with Neem Tanji and myself, uh, but Neem Tanji and I did not work on this one that I'm holding up right now. So this is the uh, Blue Dragonfly Camp Knife 1. Now, this particular knife, what the, the idea behind it is, I wanted to take a, a knife uh, with some of my favorite types of knives, the elements of them, and put them all together. And so one thing I, I did with this is I wanted a traditional Japanese Tanto style uh, blade, roughly around uh, a good usable length with a, uh, a high enough grind. So this has a high saber grind. And then a false wedge up at the top, which actually works to lighten the blade and make it a little bit faster, um, yet still gives a prominent thickness to the tip for piercing or stabbing without having to worry about breaking the, the tip. Now, my original design, the, the goal was to have a high saber grime that came down to a convex edge. The other aspect of this knife that I wanted to put on was a more Western style hand, handle with great ergonomics. In other words, having a nice palm swell, uh, nice belly swell, and a bit of a bird beak pommel, which would allow the, the, the knife to really uh, lock into your hand, but also give you some extra leverage to, uh, you know, if you want to do some chopping or you need some further extension reach, uh, you could put, pinky or, uh, put your pinky behind the bird beak and still get some really good um, leverage. Also, I wanted not a, a hand guard, but to have it curved down to where your hand would be protected from sliding up onto the cutting business. Now, there's a portion here where it's not sharp, where the bevel uh, is, is in front of or behind the bevel here where it starts. And that would be to allow you to index, put your finger on, and be able to do some push cuts if you're needing to do uh, like feathers or notching. Uh, you you didn't have a finger choil, so you could, but it would still allow you to to index it in this fashion, um, and quite and do it relatively comfortably. But it is also a 90 degree uh, down here at the bottom and up at the spine for the purpose of throwing sparks with a fire rod if you so desire. It ha comes with a lanyard hole, and the other aspects I wanted was I wanted to in integrate a um, micarta handle and so the blacksmith that i worked with um, i usually with him i had to to purchase about five at one time so it was a little bit costly 
to get my prototypes. He wouldn't just do one and ship it to me. He would do five of them. So in a way that's good because when I am uh, selecting uh, blacksmiths that I would like to work with, I like to see if they're consistent. And on this part particular project and with the uh, tactical Spitfire, uh, this particular blacksmith was very consistent. And in that sense, I was very pleased with him. And that made me, um, you know, make a decision to start using him for some of my projects. And he was loca located out in Pakistan. And <laughs> I know some of you guys, um, you know, some of us get a little knife snobby and we tend to look down on different countries or different cultures in how they produce knives. But I'll tell you, in Pakistan, there are a, a large number of blacksmiths making knives to a very high quality and very high standard. So, um, and another thing is a, a, lot, a lot of people don't really know the history of Pakistan. Pakistan used to be a part of India. And um, some of the best cookery designs came out of, and productions of cookeries came out of those regions of Pakistan, which was at one time India, during the times of World War I and World War II. Another thing is that, you know, they have a long lineage of uh, great blacksmiths uh, working there and developing Damascus steel. So a lot of times when we, when we look at Damascus steel uh, from Pakistan, we forget that the long lineage and long history that these people have been doing this, we've actually learned the Damascus techniques largely from them and from uh, other Middle Eastern countries that had perfected the Damascus steels. So, you know, um, for me to go to this guy, uh, when he approached me and I started giving him projects, I was very pleased with, with the uh, quality that he was doing. This particular uh, knife was made with D2 tool steel with micarta handles. And uh, he also uh, would build these leather sheaths. Now, the one thing that I really have to say is that unfortunately, a lot of the leather sheaths that you get from Pakistan are done in the old school style of tanning. So a lot of these have been urine tanned. And the problem with urine tanning, and these are some of the earlier prototypes that we did where he didn't quite get the, uh, the design of my handle quite correct with the ergonomics. As you will see, this particular knife has a ton of rust on it. It's been housed in this sheath. And if you get a, a leather sheath from Pakistan for any knives, do not store your knives in them because this is what happens. You will end up having rust develop on the blade. And that's all caused because of, its, of it being urine tanned. And uh, they use animal urine, such as uh, pigs or, or cows, and uh, to tan, tan the, the leather. And uh, another prototype that we had where you didn't, again, didn't quite understand uh, where I was going with the handles. It, it tends to be lumpy instead of uh, properly, uh, with proper swells. Um, and again, you can see the tremendous amount of rust being, because of this knife being stored in this leather. So when I received these and I started noticing that the knives started rusting in them, um, I became very concerned. I could not offer this product to you guys with, with scabbards that would damage your blades when holding them. So I thought I would try to correct the problem by um, soaking them in, and I mean literally soaking them. I put a bath of mink oil and I put them in there and soaked them in that, that bath of mink oil so that that mink oil could penetrate and hopefully neutralize uh, the acid in these uh, scabbards. Now, since I did that, in this particular scabbard I did it, um, this is one of the, the good knives that it did start rusting. When I first got it, I had to clean it up. And, but since I've been storing the knife in there, I put a nice uh, light co uh, coat of oil on it, as well as um, having impregnated this leather with mink oil. And I have not had any rust issues. 
So that did solve it. If you do get any scabbards, this is a little side note, um, but if you do get any leather scabbards from Pakistan, I highly recommend that you really soak them in mink oil. It's not going to hurt the leather. It's actually going to improve it. It will waterproof it, so you'll, you'll be able to carry this in a, a lot of wet environments and not have to worry about your leather falling apart on you. Um, it'll also keep the leather from cracking, and, um, and it will soften it up a little bit, too, after some use. So it's always a good idea anyways with any leather scabbard to weather protect it with, by uh, applying mink oil or neat's foot oil, uh, something like that that will be really good for leather. Uh, neat's foot oil is an oil that a lot of people will use on their baseball mitts, on um, saddles. Uh, if you're a horseback rider, all your leather products, you'll, you always treat it with neat's foot oil. It works excellent and waterproofs it and keeps it soft and subtle and keeps it from drying and cracking. So in this project, uh, when we did this, um, I was very pleased with it. I thought this is going to be a great product. I did uh, put it on the website for a while, and uh, but I hadn't followed it with any videos, and uh, I, I apologize about that uh, because many of you didn't even know about it unless you were looking at it and, and uh, might have had some questions about it. Now, the purpose of this uh, design is so that it's not going to be a super strong chopper. Of course, a cookery is going to chop much better, but it would be able to uh, split firewood. You could build a shelter with it. It's a big knife to where you could process large game like moose or um, elk with it. Uh, if any of you hunt bear, you can probably do that. You could also defend yourself with it against a bear, although I wouldn't want to be that close to a bear. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm sure many of you wouldn't either, but in a last ditch effort, this is a big enough and sharp enough knife that you could properly defend yourself uh, with. Um, very pleased with it. I really liked it. The next knife I'm going to talk about is the, uh, the smaller one, and this one is called the Tactical Spitfire. Now, I like recurve blades, so I wanted to design... Um, a recurve blade that would be truly my design. Just take certain elements, certain things that I like and put it all into a knife that would be a good uh, EDC style knife, uh, everyday carry, um, go camping, you know, pretty much do everything. Now I gave it to the same gentleman that built the camp knife and we he had the uh the understanding of good ergonomic handle design that i came up with uh, and was able to um, not have to do a bunch of different versions of it until he he was able to dial it in so he had that concept and idea already so we went again with a d2 tool steel and the micarta handles and it's blue and black and uh, ergonomically uh, shaped uh, handle. Has good palm swell, good palm belly, has an integrated uh, finger guard and a bird beak pommel with a lanyard hole. Now, this is not gonna be a heavy duty chopper. You can do some light chopping because of the belly of the blade in the design will facilitate that. You can also index it very well uh, with the integrated finger choil and come up and be able to do some skinning with it. So you could do, it, it could be a very good slicer. Now, when I showed him the design, and I'm gonna show you the design here, this was the original concept. And uh, this is what we went off of. And then later on, I gave it to Neem Tanji, and he worked off the same concept and design. So I had all the dimensions and everything. And as you can see, um, the, the, the aspects of the handle, uh, showing the proper ergonomic design of it. But up here is where I did the swedge and tried to also indicate it down here to let the builder know that this is uh, just a small uh, false edge in this area. Uh, it helps kind of lighten and also strengthen the belly area, which think of it as an I-beam. When you uh, put a fuller in or, or a swedge like this, you're actually kind of giving some strength and uh, diminishing some reverb. Uh, to the handle when using. At this point, I wanted the, the, the point of this to be definitely strong enough 
to where it would be able to be a good piercer and penetrate um, things very well without the fear of breaking it. The other thing is I didn't want this wedge to be too deep or too, uh, you know, too strong because then you end up with breaking points. Like this would be the area where the, this uh, tip could break. If this is too, too deep, like what you find with uh, the original uh, uh, Spitfire. As you can see with this one, it's a very prominent and uh, deep in as far as that swedge goes, where when we get to Neem Tanji's uh, version of it, it follows the original design where it's much shallower and not as uh, pronounced. So you have a better, uh, a stronger spine up here. It just lightens the, uh, the tip and belly area, uh, gives a better balance, helps balance the blade and also gives a prominent strong tip for piercing. So this one follows the form and function much better than the, the first original one did. And that was what my design intent was with this. So this is the concept that I gave them. Now, the other thing about this that I wanted to also uh, share and talk about is this one has a hollow forge. And what that would mean um, is with a hollow forge, you're coming in with a scallop kind of it. It, it uh, scallops into a very fine uh, bevel. Uh, to the sec for the secondary bevel. The reason why we would put that type of uh, grind on it is so that it would be more slicey. Uh, it makes it a very slicey uh, cutting edge, but it does not give it a strong edge if you're doing any type of impact, like chopping. So that wasn't really what my design intent was. My design intent, like up here, was more of a V grind that would come down to a convex edge because I wanted it to be, uh, have a, a good support, still be slicey, but also could be a relevant uh, light chopper. So what we did with uh, Neem, he actually followed that very, very well. I don't have a hollow grind going down to that secondary bevel. It's a V grind that comes down and gets to that uh, good convex edge that he puts on it, which still makes it extremely sharp and slicey. So this was the design that we did um, and what we worked off of. But I wanted the tip to be robust enough to where it would hold up. Now, with that concept, he didn't quite understand what I was doing. And um, he ended up almost putting like a, a false edge here at a very kind of a rectangular angles. So you got a very prominent lines up at the top here and a, a very thin part of the, the blade in this uh, part of the spine. That wasn't really what I was after, what I was trying to go for. Uh, but outside of that, he followed the design very well. Um, the only other thing that I didn't really, wasn't very pleased about, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you got a nice secondary bevel that comes right down and then its sharpness, the sharp area, stops at this point. So you have all of this blade where you don't have any cutting ability. Now for the finger choil where it is, I was hoping that this area right here would be sharp. So it would be good for doing your notching, your push cuts, um, detail work. Instead, you're, you have to really be conscious of where that cutting area is. And if you get a little bit too close to where the finger choil is, you're going to be frustrated because you're not going to get good results. So that ended up being a failure to this design. I did have it on the website for a while, but it was really kind of bothering me about these two areas that we missed on the design. I really like the angle of the handle, which is what the way I designed it, which makes it a little bit more uh, suitable to give it a little bit better physics for chopping and also a little bit better physics in your hand for uh, thrusting or stabbing. So um, it's a, a, not quite a pistol grip, but it, it does come down a little bit of an angle, which uh, I was very pleased about that he followed. Again, it came with this uh, leather scabbard. It has uh, the... Uh, um, the ferro rod loop and it's 
kind of a pouch style uh, knife uh, sheath with a snap retention st strap and it does hold it in very well. The problem is, again, was the leather. The leather was um, uh, urine tanned and so it was, when I got my five that, I, that he gives me, um, they started rusting. So all of them I've had to clean up and uh, I've given a lot of these away for gifts now with family and stuff. But it's, it was, uh, it's a very comfortable knife, uh, it has good balance. The balance point is right, right about at this point. So, which is right where you'd want it, um, especially if you're doing any detail work. You know, you're not getting any blade heaviness or handle heaviness. It gives you a good uh, dexterity of control. Like I said, this was the Spitfire, the Tactical Spitfire 1, and this was the, um, the Blue Dragonfly Camp Knife 1. I started doing some other projects with this blacksmith and things started getting uh, a lot tougher to get a good quality and consistent quality on my knives. And then there was some dishonesty that, <laughs> that occurred that really I, I don't go well with. And so we felt at that point in time it was better that we part our separate ways and um, I stopped uh, using him for some of my projects. But I didn't want to let this die. And I really wanted to see if we could do some improvements on it. So I went to Neem Tanji and I gave him these designs. So this is the Dragonfly Cookery, uh, or the Blue Dragonfly, I'm sorry, the Blue Dragonfly Camp Knife 2. Now what's different about it, you'll notice right off the bat, we, pro um, we solved the problem of leather altogether by creating Kydex sheets. So this comes with a Kydex sheath that is, um, uh, it's completely encapsulates the blade. Uh, there is, um, the only thing that we're going to change on it is a drainage hole that we did not uh, put the drainage hole in it that needs to be there. Uh, but on future ones, it will be there. And uh, this is one of the prototypes. It comes with a dangler uh, that you can uh, slide it. There's a leather, uh, a belt loop on a D-ring and then the Kydex um, uh, dangler part. This can also fit a belt. So you could t not use the D-ring the and be able to slide it on your belt or you could use the leather and slide it on your belt. Another nice thing too is you can unscrew this and change it for ambidextrous carry. So it could be left hand or right hand or you can even take this off and put uh, other types of um, clips on it. Well, I don't have it handy. I thought I had it handy, but uh, you know, other types of clips to carry it on your belt. Now let's talk about the knife. Here is the Dragonfly Camp Knife 2, and this one has exactly what I was looking for in the, the follow through of my original design. This has, again, we're using the Tonto style blade um, in its profile, particularly in this area. Also, we have the, the swedge that's up here that's longer. It's not as quite as pronounced and short, which allows for um, a better balance to the blade, but also gives it a uh, very prominent strength in the point. So this could be a very good thrusting knife or uh, you could you definitely, if you needed to um, start a hole for a bow drill, you could use a tip on this and not have any fear of it breaking. Along with that, uh, instead of the D2 tool steel, we're using 5160 high carbon steel. So it's a high carbon blade, which will allow for it to have good uh, and easy maintenance out in the field. Again, we have the ergonomic handle, which nice palm swells on it, good belly swell, integrated finger guard and bird beak promo with a lanyard hole and it's made out of Indian hardwood um, rosewood and uh, what we're going to do in the future is um, I will talking to, to uh, Neem about this now about starting to build some of our knives and cookeries with micarta handles and so we're going to try a micarta handle version of this but for right now what it's available on the website with the hardwood handle. 
Um, you know, as with all wood handles, I highly recommend that you um, put a couple coats of um, linseed oil on it and then uh, follow with uh, beeswax. And that'll keep the knife, uh, the handles, uh, as they start to go through different elements, as they shrink and as they expand, they'll be able to uh, withstand it a little better. But this is exactly what, as far as a blade and everything, it, it really came out exactly the way as I was hoping it would. And it would be, this is a good size, excellent um, hunting knife, um, you know, camp knife. If you, it's, it might be a little bit too big for some people to take out for backpacking. Um, however, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a very uh, excellent tool. Now, in the future, we also may do the same style and profile and everything, but just bring it in as a 5-inch uh, blade instead of a 10-inch blade. Uh, the overall dimensions on this, I don't have my tape measure handy, I apologize, has a 10-inch blade and then a 5-inch handle. So overall is 15 inches. The next knife that we did is the Tactical Spitfire 2. And this one, again, I gave to Neem Tanji. And the way that we improved it on it, having trouble, is we uh, did a uh, taco style uh, kydex scabbard with um, a belt loop. Uh, it has a really good thumb ramp for easy take in and out. Uh, you just push off with your thumb and you're able to take the knife out. Now again, we have the 5160 high carbon steel. We still keep a lot of the good uh, elements of the design that I liked where we have a slight angle to the handle, great belly swell, bird beak pommel, integrated finger uh, guard, and a nice um, palm swell here on the sides to really facil facilitate a good ergonomic handle that's very comfortable. Uh, the handle's a little bit on the long side, but for those of you guys with big hands, uh, your hands will fit on this, this handle very comfortably. And um, uh, yet it's not too fat or bulky. Um, there's nothing to create hot spots with on this handle, so you could use this knife all day long. Again, a green, a integrated finger choil. And this time, it is sharp all the way up to... Um, to where the the bevel is so it's it's sharp all the way up to this point so when you are using this to create feather sticks push cuts notching uh, it is very relevant and very useful again you have a very good belly now what i really like is he did solve the problem about the top swedge up here at the top it's not quite as uh, deep it does follow the design the original design that i had and uh, allows for a very good strong uh, tip for uh, piercing and stabbing. So this is um, the reason why it's tactical. I was thinking of the police force or military that might be able to um, find good use for this because if you needed to you could definitely split wood with it. You could um, do some light chopping. Uh, it's not going to take down a tree of course but you know to to use it as a camp tool you could definitely use it. It also could be very good for skinning uh, you can get great indexing on it and be able it has good curve and belly to it to allow you to have some great slicing and control. Uh, it has a bit of a 90 degree spine, not quite as sharp as I would like it to be for throwing sparks off a of ferro rod. Um, that you could just touch up with a belt sander and you could uh, easily have that at 90 degrees, no problem. Um, and it's just, it has great balance. The balance, again, is right where it needs to be, which is right here at the handguard. So when you're using it, it's very comfortable to use. And uh, uh, I really am very pleased on how Neem did this. He really nailed it. And um, this one, again, uh, we're going to try to put uh, uh, micarta scales on in the future. So be looking for the, the next upgrade, which will probably be called the... Uh, Tactical Spitfire 2, or I mean, it's Tactical Spitfire 3 with the, uh, with the micarta handles. Or we may just keep the name the same and, and just have it as a selection where you can choose wood, horn, or um, micarta. 
So look for these on our website. Uh, they are now available to order. They are hand built. So um, I don't carry stock on these, but look for them. This is the Dragonfly Cookery, I mean, Dragonfly uh, Camp Knife 2, and this one is the Tactical Spitfire 2. I hope this was useful information um, and a good introduction to these new blades that are not really all that new, but will be new to you guys. Please look at, at them if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them on my uh, YouTube page or also on my uh, Blue Dragonfly Trading Post page on Facebook. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and always please come and visit our website at Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. Thank you very much for watching. Namaste. God bless.